Lesson 10, One-Dimensional Arrays. To follow along with this lesson, you will need to create a new empty console project and add a new C++ file named main.cpp to it. Arrays are the first aggregate data type that we are covering. An array is a collection of elements of the same type. In this particular example, we have an array of four ints. The syntax for the declaration of the array looks like this. This array is a collection of four int variables which we can index by using the integers 0 through 3. Note that array indices in C++ always begin at 0. We can represent this array as a set of four empty boxes. We consider the box is empty at this point because we haven't initialized the array yet. We have only declared it. These four lines initialize the entries of the array. Note the bracket syntax that we use. The bracket operator allows us to access individual elements of an array just as we would any other int. After initialization, the array is filled like this. We can even access the elements to display them in the console window to verify our assignment. Alternatively, we can initialize the entire array at once like this. You can try this yourself and verify that the code gives the same result as before. Additionally, we can remove the size parameter and allow the compiler to determine the size of the array for us. This method has the advantage that we can add or remove elements without having to worry about updating the size parameter. At this point, it should be noted that we cannot simply output an entire array at once, as we would any other variable. If you try this, you will output the memory address at the beginning of the array. We can think of an array as a sequence of locations in memory. This is an important consideration to make while using arrays in C++. Arrays do not have bounds checking, so the compiler will not complain, for example, if you write this or even this. Indices outside of the bounds will cause accesses to memory that isn't part of the array. Accessing memory outside of our array like this can cause serious problems and be very difficult to debug. For this reason, many other languages make checks on the array bounds for every access. There are reasons for and against bounds checking. At present, we will just note that C++ doesn't check bounds. Also, we cannot use the assignment operator to copy one array to another, like this, as we did with ints, doubles, chars, and bools. Instead, if we wish to copy an array, we need to assign each element individually. Usually, this is best accomplished with a loop. Not everything that is true of arrays applies to char arrays. Char arrays were used for character strings in the early days of C and C++, and hence have retained some additional behavior. For example, you can use char arrays to input a string of characters like this, or we can initialize a char array like this. In both of these examples, the zero is added at the end of the chars in the array. The zero signals the end of a character string. Unlike other arrays, we can output an entire char array at once but we should be sure that it has a zero at the end. This concludes the lesson.